everyone. Today I have a sliding towel workout for you that is going to take you just about 30 minutes to complete. Now we won't just be using the towel as a slider, we're also going to be holding it in our hands for part of this. So if you have hardwood floors, all you need for equipment is a towel. You, you'll use it as both your slider and your grip. If you're working out on carpet, you're gonna need a towel for grip and then you're gonna need something to slide across your carpet on. Um, if you don't have gliders, hardcover books work, so do paper plates. This is a completely low impact workout, so there's no jumping around. It is downstairs neighbors approved, and you don't need much space to do it in, so this is really awesome for a home workout. Now, admittedly, verbally explaining the structure of this workout is gonna seem a little confusing and overwhelming. I want you to just trust me that I'm gonna guide you through it the whole time, and it'll make sense as we get going. Basically, this workout is broken up into three different sequences. In each sequence, you'll flow through exercises and combinations, adding in holds and pulses and variations continuously. When you finish the sequence, you rest for 30 seconds before repeating it. First sequence is our longest. We go through it four times, twice on each leg. Second sequence, a little shorter. We're gonna go through it just three times because it's not unilateral, so we'll be doing both sides at once. Final sequence is the quickest. It's a little core burnout. It's gonna be a challenging slider plank thing, but it's gonna go really quick. If you've done some of my other slider workouts in the past where we build these really long, like seven or eight minute long sequences, and you find that that's a little too much without rest, then this workout is perfect for you. There will be some repetition because we'll be going through the same sequence a few times, but with that added rest built in, it's a great way to build up to those longer flows that I've done in other videos. That being said, this one is not easy. <laughs> so don't worry, it's gonna challenge you. It's just a little different. As with all workouts, you wanna make sure you're properly warmed up beforehand and always listen to your body, modifying or stopping as needed. These are all low impact and pretty accessible exercises. So your best way to modify, hit pause on the video, take a break as needed, and then get back into it. Before each sequence, I'm gonna give you a quick preview of the movements to expect. So you'll know what's coming before we jump into it, but then I'm also gonna verbally guide you through the whole thing. If you're new to my channel, for the most part, I do not play music in the background of my videos because I want you to be able to listen to whatever you like. So if you don't have a playlist or a podcast or a TV show queued up, you might want to get that going. And with all that said, I'm going to get to a preview of our first sequence. Okay, so we have a two and a half minute sequence that we're gonna do twice on the left leg, then twice on the right leg. If you're doing this on hardwood floor, I would recommend a setup like mine is with the mat here um, so that we can glide and then when we come down to our hands, you have some padding. First exercise is going to be a back lunge into a deadlift hinge, so we'll be lifting our right foot up and off that towel. Left foot is planted, right foot slider. We're gonna start with 60 seconds of that combo. I want you to square your hips. We have a little pitch forward with the torso that's gonna help us activate through the back side of the leg. We start in three, two, one. So we lunge down, just starting my timer. When you come to the top, stop with a soft bend of this left knee. Right foot comes off of the towel, hinge it forward, bring it back down. Maybe we get the arms involved, arms reaching up overhead as you lower into the lunge. Bring it up to the top and arms airplane behind you as you go into this hinge. So we're here for a full minute. It's not about how many reps you get in. I care more that you are focusing on form. And if these arm movements aren't working for you, just keep your arms wherever works. Now when we go into that hinge, make sure you're not opening up through the hips. So I want you to think of pulling that right hip down in line with your left hip so the hip bones are square to the floor. You're also not locking out that left knee in the hinge. You got 15 more seconds in this combo. And then we're gonna hold the deadlift hinge just for 15 seconds, a little bit of a balance challenge. Woo, speaking of balance challenge, down I go. <laughs> All right guys, next time you come up to the top, 
airplane forward, soft bend of that left knee. We are holding here. Hips are square. If you want to advance this, you add a little bend and stretch through that left knee. Not here for much longer. We're going to meet in a low lunge. You're here for three, for two, and one, right foot plants back down on that slider. Find your low lunge position. From here, it's a knee slide back. Right knee comes in and out. Now, when the knee comes in, I want you to stop in that split lunge position. Give me a pulse up and down. So one knee slide out and in, one pulse up and down. You're not straightening out your left leg all the way when you do that pulse. 15 more seconds. Coming up, we're going to be in a single leg plank position. You are going to switch which foot is on the slider. That's in three, two, one. Hands come down to the mat. Now your left foot is on the slider. Take your right knee, crunch it in towards your chest, single leg knee tuck. So that left knee bends in and you straighten out to that single leg plank. Now, if you want to advance this, your right leg can be in a straight hover as you do it. If you want to modify it, you're going to hook your right foot on the left heel and do it this way. We're almost done with this sequence. We are going to hold the knee tuck position in three, two, bend that left knee and it's stacked right under your hips. Straighten your right leg out. Just hold. You got this. Hips are square. Final 10 seconds. Hold for four, three, two, one. Rest. All right, 30 seconds to shake it out, and then we're going to do that exact same sequence again on the left leg. Okay, last time on this leg. Left foot is planted. Ball of the right foot is lightly on your slider. Square your hips. Hinge forward. We have 60 seconds of that back lunge to the deadlift. Let's start in three, two, one, and let's go. If you're going to add in the arms, they reach overhead as you slide back into that lunge. And then as you come to the top, they airplane behind you. Soft bend to that left knee. Hinge it forward. Land softly back into your next lunge. Remember, square hips to the floor on that deadlift. Softness in the left knee. Do not lock it out. Woo, a little wobbly. <laughs> Make sure that you're not collapsing into the arch of your left foot for me. So you keep the big toe on the floor, but there's a little lift through the middle of the foot. Just over 10 seconds here. We'll hold the hinge for a little bit of a balance challenge coming up. In three, two, next time you come up into that hinge, hold it. Pull that right hip down a smidge, extend the leg long, reach the crown of your head towards the wall in front of you, advance you at a little pulse through that left knee. Get ready to meet in that low lunge in three, two, right foot plants. Tank it down to your low lunge. You slide the knee in. You give me a pulse. And then you straighten that right leg out. 45 seconds here. When you do this split lunge pulse, I want you to think of creating it by driving your left heel into the floor. You're not putting a bunch of weight in your back right foot. It's pretty light. That's why we're keeping the heel jacked up high. Fifteen more seconds and then we'll make our way into that plank position. Got it. Last time through the sequence on this leg. Hands come to the mat. Switch which foot is on the glider in three, two, one. Hands to the mat. Left foot slider. Right knee crunches in. Single leg knee tuck. That left knee draws in and out. This is your base position. Advanced, your right leg is straight extended behind you. Modified, your right foot is hooked on your left heel. Do the one that works for you. In 10 seconds, we finish with that 15 second hold. Left knee under left hip. In three, two, left knee under left hip. Extend that right leg behind you. Hold. Don't pike your hips up towards the ceiling. Engage through the abdominals. You're here for four, three, 
two, one, done. All right, 30 seconds to rest. We're going to move on to the right leg. Okay, right leg, you know the drill. Left foot's gonna be on your glider now. Right foot is going to be planted. Square your hips. First move is that combo. Back lunge into that deadlift hinge. Twice on the right leg, and then you get new movements. We start in three, two, one. Let's go. If you're adding the arms, they reach overhead, creating a long diagonal line. They come behind you into an airplane at the top. Don't lock out that right knee. Release the left foot from your glider. Hinge forward, land softly right back into that low lunge. Hips are staying square as you do this. You are keeping the lean forward with the torso so that the back leg remains the focus. If you come into this lunge and your torso is straight up and down, this is more of a quad exercise, which isn't wrong, but not what we're doing today. In a little over 10 seconds, we are going to meet in that deadlift hold for a little bit of a balance challenge. If airplane arms doesn't work for you in the balance, bring your hands wherever it works, okay? Three, two, go into that balance hold, unlock your right knee, pull your left hip down square. If you want to advance it, you can add in that little bend and stretch. You're here for three, for two, Land in that low lunge, left foot on the glider, big hinge forward with your torso. It's a knee slide with that split lunge pulse. Stay low. Now let's just check in on our hips because sometimes as we start to fatigue, we try to dump a lot of weight into this left side. So your hips should be level. You might need to pick your left hip up an inch actually. In 10 seconds, hands are going to come to the mat. You're going to switch which foot is on the glider. We have the single leg knee tucks. In three, two, one. Hands to the mat. You're in a high plank. Right foot comes to the glider. Left knee crunches in. From here, you bend that back knee in and out, keeping the hips at shoulder height. Long neck here because you're maintaining a long spine. Get ready for that hold. The right knee will bend in just under your hips. In three, two, right knee bends in, left leg extends long, square your hips, hold. Don't pike your hips up to the ceiling. Get a little longer. Reach those left toes towards the wall behind you. You're here for four. Hold for three, two, one, rest. All right, 30 seconds, shake it out. We are going through that sequence one final time on the right leg and I'll give you a whole new sequence. Okay, last time you'll see these movements. Right foot planted, ball of the left foot on your glider, square your hips, hinge forward with the torso, shoulders are gonna stay over that front knee. We move in three, two, one, lunge to deadlift, let's go. So I know doing the same sequence four times might feel a little repetitive, but the goal of this is, um, a, as opposed to some of my other glider workouts where you're doing a really long sequence without a rest on the same leg, this is a good way to kind of ease into those because you get those little breaks. That being said, because I'm giving you that recovery time, it is important that there is some repetition involved so that we still get that nice effective Woo, working. We have that balance hold coming up. Next time you hinge it forward, hold. Hips are square. You can bring your arms wherever works for you. Abdominals are engaged. If you want to advance it, it's a little bend and stretch through that right knee. 
Very challenging. Three, two, one. Land in that low lunge. Left foot back on the towel. Square your hips. Knee drive in and out with that split lunge pulse. So extend your left leg. Bend it in. Up a few inches. Down a few inches. Don't worry about speed. Checking on those hips, they're square, they are level. In about 10 seconds, hands are gonna come to the mat. You'll switch which foot is on the glider, single leg knee tucks. Three, two, Hands to the mat, switch which foot is on the glider. Left knee crunches in, hold it out of hover. That right knee draws in and out. Again, take the version with your left leg that works for you. You can hook it on the right heel, or you can even straighten it out. We have that hold coming up. Right knee bends in. In three, two, bend your right knee and find tabletop. Extend your left leg long if you can. Now do this without tucking your tailbone under, okay? So long neutral spine here. Hold, you're almost done with the sequence. Three, two, one, done. Huh. All right, so you have 60 seconds to recover while I give you a little preview of our next sequence. to a voiceover because my husband is taking a work call. Yay, quarantine life. <laughs> For this circuit, I want you to have the towel in between your hands. Pull it tight, okay? So create tension. It's going to start overhead. We're doing a squat to a calf raise. So as you squat down, you bring the towel, lowering it down. And then as you come up, you're rising up onto the balls of your feet and that towel is coming over your head. Squeeze your glutes at the top. You're here for 30 seconds. Now I want you to notice when you're doing that calf raise, what's going on with your ankle? I don't want you to let it roll and rock out to the sides. So that might mean don't come up as high in the calf raise. This is something I know I always catch myself doing and I'm trying to work on. At the beep, you're going to hold it low. Hold that squat, weight in the heels, it's two pulses up with the arms, one row in and out. Now again, I want you pulling out as if you could rip that towel in half, create tension. Check in on your shoulders, make sure that you're not rounding forward, so we're maintaining good shoulder stabilization here, you're brought across the collarbones. Now try not to come out of that squat. When you hear that beep, it's gonna be a pulse, arm stay still. Up an inch, down an inch, you have 15 seconds. Now here I want you to start getting ready to transition to our next move. So you're gonna take that towel and it's gonna become a slider padding under your knees. We're coming into our cobra march. All right, towel comes down, kneel on it. So from this kneeling plank position, you're going to start to bend the elbows, sliding back in your cobra. You're going to march up, walk forward, repeat, and you're going to lead with the opposite arm. So you're going to march up right, left, walk forward, right, left, and then next time it'll go left, right, left, right. You're here for 45 seconds. Now, if you're advanced, you can do this on your feet instead of having your knees on the towel. Just a heads up, we have plank work coming up after this that will be on your feet. So if you're on the fence, just stay on your knees. <laughs> you have a few more like this. When you hear that beep, we are going to meet down on our forearms. You'll tuck your toes. You will lift up into a forearm plank. Okay, knee tap. So from your forearm plank, one knee bends, lightly kiss the floor, then the other knee, then both knees together. Your goal is to do this without moving the pelvis too much. It is staying at neutral. Your hips are at shoulder height. They're not piked up towards the ceiling. And you are maintaining that gentle bracing sensation of the abdominal wall. 
You have one more movement to get through. It's going to be a marching plank. When you hear those beeps, you're going to hold that plank and march up onto straight arms, back down to forearms. I want you alternating your lead arm. So go left, right, left, right, then right, left, right, left with as little dumping of the hips as possible. You're almost there. And rest. You have 30 seconds to recover here. We're going to do that whole thing twice more. Get ready to start that sequence from the top. So we are gripping that towel. You are pulling it apart, create tension. We have that squat to a calf raise. As you squat down, lower the towel. As you come up into that calf raise, towel comes overhead. Now, as you're lifting the towel overhead, I want you to notice what's going on with your rib cage. We don't want to puff open through the rib cage, so we need to kind of maintain an, uh, that abdominal connection here. If you have tight shoulders, that might mean that the arms only come up to forehead height and you don't reach them all the way over ahead. As you rise up, hips are coming forward. Squeeze your glutes. When you hear the beep, hold low. All right, legs hold a squat, arms move. Two pulses, lifting up twice, and then row. Pull in and out. There should not be slack on that towel. Pull it apart as you do this. Don't let the shoulder blades protract super far forward. Try to keep them in a neutral position. All right, now hold the arms out. It's just the pulse of the legs. Up an inch or two, down an inch or two. Weight is in your heels, and we're going to start to transition into that cobra so you can adjust the towel and get that ready. Cobra march. Knees come down on that towel or feet. If you're advanced, you come into a modified plank position. Maintaining that uh, torso alignment, you're going to cobra down, so it's kind of like a sliding tricep dip. You march up. You walk forward, you repeat leading with the other arm. In about 10 seconds, you will take your final cobra down to those forearms and stay on those forearms coming into your forearm plank. Let's go, we got those knee taps, both forearms down. Tuck your toes under, lift those knees, right knee, left knee, and then both together. Now I am going to recommend your forearms parallel. If right now you're interlacing your fingers and you have your forearms in kind of that triangle shape, sometimes what happens is we sort of round through the shoulders in that position. So it's easier to maintain that broadness across the collarbones if you bring your forearms to parallel. At the beep, we go into our march. Let's go, last 15 seconds. Up to straight arms, down to forearms. If you need to modify, drop to your knees, do this in a modified plank position. Or if you need to take out the march and just hold the plank, that is an option too. You have 30 seconds to rest. We're gonna go through that sequence one final time before we move on. All right, last time, grab that towel, pull it apart, squat to calf raise. So we're getting our heart rate up a little bit on this one. Um, you can move a little faster here as long as you don't sacrifice proper form. When you hear that beep, hold that low squat. Low squat, hold just the arms move. Pulse up twice, one row, driving the elbows back, extending them back out. So weight is in your heels. We're not collapsing into our inner arches. Our big toe is down, but light. We're not gripping the floor with our toes. We have one more change in this low squat position coming up. 
When you hear that beep, arms are still, pulse the legs. Let's go 15 seconds here. Now we want a quick transition into that cobra so you can start to relax the tension on the towel if you need to change position of it. I'm gonna fold mine for some padding, drop it on the floor so it's nearby. Cobra march, let's go, knees down. Hands shoulder width apart. Sliding tricep dip, lower down smoothly onto your forearms, march up one arm at a time, walk it forward, repeat if these feel easy. Try a couple with your feet on the towel instead of your knees on the towel so you'd be in a full plank position. Now you want your neck at neutral, so your gaze is not at your knees, you're also not craning your neck. Your gaze is kind of a little in front of the fingers. Forearm plank hold coming up when you hear that beat. Get ready to take your final cobra down to those elbows. And freeze, tuck your toes, lift those knees, and let's go into that little bend, right? Left and then both together, trying to maintain neutral spine, neutral pelvic bone here, so don't dump the hips side to side. If doing both knees together is too much, just stick to alternating. In 10 seconds, you're going to hear that beep. You go into your march one last time, and then you're done with the sequence for the day. Let's go start to march up to straight arms, down to forearms. Alternate your lead arms. So go right, left, right, left, then left, right, left, right. Squeeze the quads as if you could lift them off your kneecaps. Your legs are engaged. And you have a full minute to recover. I'm going to show you our final sequence. Final sequence, this one is quick. It's a little plank core challenge to wrap everything up. So we're gonna start with your left side obliques as the focus. So I want your left foot on the slider, come to plank, your right foot is just on the floor. You're gonna slide that left knee in towards your left elbow, you're gonna swish it across to your right elbow and then you extend it back out. So you slide it in, across, back square, straighten it out. Right leg is your base leg. It is active though, so squeeze the quad as if you could lift it off your kneecaps. And when you draw that left knee, and I want it as close to your arms as possible, at the beep, we're gonna lift that left foot off of the slider. Keep the knee crunched in, we're taking it into windshield wipers. So it is hovering, we're not using that glider and you're just gonna swish that left knee from elbow to elbow. It is as close to your arms as possible. At the beeps, we're going to come to forearms. Both feet are going to come onto the slider. We're in a twisted forearm pike position. From here, it's one twisted pike. And then you're going to open up into a side plank on that left forearm and give me two pulses of the hips. So we got a little combo here. Close the torso back, square it off. One twisted pike and then open up. So you're, you'll notice your lower body is always kind of in that side plank position. We are just twisting open and close through the torso. When you hear that beep, we'll close it down. It's just gonna be that twisted pike. So both forearms down, hips are piking up and down. Don't worry about how high up you get the hips, okay? This could be one inch of movement. This is gonna be harder if your heels are down and you're on the razor edges of your feet and a little nicer if you do it on the balls of your feet. Now shift weight into that left forearm, come into your side plank, 15 seconds here, pulse it out. I want your top hip stacked on top of the bottom one, so you might need to pull it forward a little bit like I just did. Final few seconds. Rest, come to your knees and let's take a little stretch. Bring that left arm up and over, side bend mirroring me. 
So you have 30 seconds to rest here. We're going to repeat that on the right side. And a heads up, after we repeat it on the right side, we're just going to bring everything to center to wrap up this workout um, with just some bicycle crunches. So I'll guide you through that. But know that you're not totally off the hook after that last side plank. So we're going to start in our high plank position. This time your right foot is on the glider. Right foot glider, left foot floor. Let's go. That right knee slides into the right elbow, across to the left elbow, back to the right elbow, straighten it out to your plank. In 10 seconds, it's just going to be that windshield wiper motion, and we are going to lift the foot off of the glider to make it a little harder. Let's go windshield wiper. That knee swishes side to side. It is as close to your arms as possible. If this is too much, keep your foot on the slider and swish it with the support of the floor. We're going to transition into that forearm plank for our twisted pike. Both feet come onto the slider. Forearm plank, twist your lower body open so that your right hip is angled towards the floor, left hip kind of up towards the ceiling. It's one twisted pike, and then you open up into that side plank, two pulses in that side plank. Close the chest back down square to the floor, one twisted pike. Open up with control. When you hear that beep, both forearms come down. We keep the lower body twisted. It's just going to be that twisted pike. All right, let's go. Again, don't worry about how high up you are getting the hips. I want as little rocking forward of the shoulders as possible as you do this, which is easier said than done when you're gliding across the floor. Um, but just don't dump your shoulders into your fists. Keep weight in that right forearm. Open up into your side plank, little pulses of the hips to finish. So think of drawing your elbow towards your feet without actually moving it so that our lats are engaged. And rest, bend your knees, drop them down, and then right arm sweeps up and over. Take that quick side body stretch. All right, we're going to come into a bicycle crunch. I don't like to finish on one side, so we're just going to kind of tie everything together. I want you to lay down on your back. Regular old bicycle crunches here, so elbows wide but pointing slightly forward so that you don't puff open through the rib cage, and you're just cycling those knees opposite elbow towards opposite knee. You're here for 30 seconds, and then we'll finish with one hold. Couple more like this. Now I want both knees bent. I want you to reach your arms forward and then straighten your legs. Start with them pretty high and then lower them to challenge yourself, but not so low that your low back comes out of neutral. Three, two, one, lay down, hug your knees into your chest and you are done. Awesome job. Hope you enjoyed that workout. If you did, you know the drill. Give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I post new workouts here at least every Monday, some weeks more frequently. So hit subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss a video. I will see you here soon.